Unbelievable. Northern elder don't face uh, Wiki. He said, when I come to Abuja, I see Wiki is doing a good job. But when I go back home, I see poverty. How come this is not reflecting all across the country in a positive light? So this is what is happening right about now. If you know Professor Yusuf very well, he said what he's seeing, you know, going across, happening in the country is not very palatable for him. He's not quite happy. He's mm, not very happy with the disposition of things, how things are. No, no, no. He's, he's, not, uh, he's not happy. He's not really happy. He said because... When he come to Abuja and see the level of development, you know, Wiki is the FCT minister now. He said he's quite happy to see, you know, things moving forward. He said, but when he go back home, it's a different ball game altogether. And it's not the same thing. He says, so the thing is doing him somehow, somehow. And he does not really understand how to begin to put all of this together. Anyway, my lovely people, now so the matter, they hit us. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up like or share subscribe let's get all the details mm -hmm. in a recent tv um interview on channel's tv Yus husman yusuf the former executive secretary of the national health insurance scheme nhis stated his dissatisfaction on happiness with the status in nigeria he mentioned that he has seen wiki working on major infrastructural projects like building roads when visiting Abuja. But this stands in shaky contrast to the mystery and poverty he sees in the north, where a large number of Nigerians, especially women and children, go without food at night. Yusuf lamented that despite the country's appearance of wealth, the basic needs of its citizens are not being met. He highlighted the lack of employment opportunities, inadequate health care and educational system, and the overall negligence of welfare of citizens. He, questions the, he questioned the parity of the resources we have in this country, wondering why funds are located to giant projects, why the most vulnerable members of the community, country, society are left to suffer. If the people die, who will live in these buildings? According to him, when I come to Abuja, sometimes I see that Wiki is doing a good job, road, infrastructure. When I go back home, it's a drastic contrast. I see poverty and I say to myself, we have all this money in the country. How come the government is committed to building road flyovers where millions of Nigerians are really suffering? The neighborhoods are in urgent poverty. Yet there is buildings going on. Women and children are going to bed hungry. We have money to do all this project, but not for taking care of our basic needs. But we don't have money to take care of the people. We don't have a job to, you know, to give to our youths so people can continue to live their life. We don't feed well. The hospitals are in mess. The schools are in mess. Things are going from bad to worse. Mm -hmm. And yet, all these opportunities, we have them in this country, but we are channeling it in the wrong direction. When do we begin to take the appropriate and right steps in order to ensure the truth, you know, is being dispensed in bringing about the provision of truth, of, you know, of the true position of making this country a better place. You know, Yusuf said, we came himself should have a, dis a discussion with himself as well as, you know, with every other person to understand some of these things and to be able to advise the government, you know, adequately. He said, because it's, it's wrong. It's wrong. What, what's happening right now is wrong. There is no other name for it. What is wrong is wrong. You know, people are genuinely suffering. And what do we have? You know, is people are being given palliatives. Yes. People have been giving palliatives in their own country. You know, they can hardly feed themselves, look after themselves, their families. But what do we have? We have some people, you know, enjoying as though, you know, there's no tomorrow. Why some people are barely getting by? So how do you reconcile all of this? So it is, it is, it is a very, very, it's a mystery that needs to be unraveled so that a progress can begin to, you know, can become a, a, a normal thing and people can begin to, walk in that light to bring about the real change that we all need right now right now as we speak you can see that um you know the north is not just depleted in terms of um scarcity of wealthy people 
you know, is depleted in terms of uh, people cannot feed. The ability for people to be able to have something to look after themselves and to take care of themselves is totally out of the way. People can no longer look after themselves, take care of themselves, feed. And this is a serious, serious, serious issue. You know, people are beginning to, you know, look for all sorts and all kinds of ways to say, how do I survive? These are very, very, these are serious things that have serious implications. And that's why again and again, every single individual must ensure that we do all humanly speaking possible, necessary to change the course of what is going on. So that, you know, and that is, first of all, acknowledging that there is something wrong. And everybody rising up to it, everybody doing all the necessary functions in terms of ensuring, you know, that we do not allow these politicians who mainly, most of them are looking after themselves, not the nation. Don't get me wrong. There are people who genuinely cares for this nation. There are people who genuinely are looking after this nation who, you know, with the opportunity they have as leaders, they want to do everything, humanly speaking, possible to ensure that they bring about change. But most often, you know, said than known, most of the people we have, most, if not all, are basically looking after themselves. Most of them, if not all, are basically looking after themselves. And that is why we cannot afford to be silent and allow selfish individuals to determine what happened. We all must rise up. We must come to that, that place where we rise to the occasion and we begin to say it as it is. And the truth is manifested. No one should be allowed okay, to, to come into leadership when we know fully well that these are selfish individuals. Look at how things are going. A nation where we are more concerned about you know, infrastructure rather than the people first of all surviving. How do we describe all of this? But these are particularly what Nigerians are experiencing, okay, because of the, you know, the kind of people we have, the situation, and it's terrible, sincerely, truly terrible. Enough is enough. So we cannot continue to allow, you know, this to go on. I understand that, Professor Yusuf. He said when he comes and he sees what is going on, he sees, you know, he, he mm. looks at um, mm. Abuja, he sees infrastructural development, he's amazed, you know, at the level at which things are going. But coming face to face to, you know, with reality back in the States, he sees abject poverty. He cannot even begin to comprehend. The level of poverty is beyond words going on, you know, in the North, you know, especially the North. Other areas, yes, may be experiencing this and that, but the North is seriously being hit. And that is because they've been deprived of, you know, they've been deprived a long time now of education, a lot of things that will help the people to become better, and things are worse off than you can imagine, you see. So people are going through uh, unbelievable uh, situations, you know. So this is part of what is going on, you see. Please don't forget, every one of us, I've got an opportunity to make a difference. Every one of us, you see. So we must stand for what is true, what is right. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Like us, share, subscribe. Click on the notification button so you can get all our latest news. Remember, you have a voice. God bless. Have a fantastic and a lovely day from us. It's bye for now.